But what is the left now? They're pro-censorship, right? They are victimhood culture. They are all about moral righteousness. Um, they're taught that claiming to be offended results in a moral victory. In politics, it's really important that we compare something real to something else that's real. That we're not falling into the trap of comparing a blueprint to an actual building. You can't contrast something ideal to something real. It's very misleading. So, for example, when you talk to communists, very often they will state to you some particular problem they object to in capitalism. For example, wage inequality. They'll say they morally oppose capitalism because of the extreme wage inequality between a factory worker and a factory manager, someone in, in management. Now, if in reply you point out, well, have you examined how factories actually operated in the Soviet Union or in China or in Cuba or North Korea? Have you looked at the reality of wage inequality in communist societies? They'll often get angry in response to this and say, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not comparing the reality of capitalism to the reality of communism. I'm comparing the reality of capitalism to this ideal. But we can't do that. You can compare a blueprint to a blueprint. You can compare an actual building to an actual building. But when we're comparing left and right, whether we're comparing communists and capitalists or within the Canadian spectrum, the moderate left within Canada, the moderate right within Canada, it's really important to keep grounded in the sense of comparing one thing that's real, one thing that's empirically real, to something else that's empirically real. I think the first false step that Lindsay Shepard takes here is that she is comparing the reality of the left and the left as she's encountered it over social media in the rough and tumble of slander and defamation and sniping and infighting and nasty comments on Twitter. She's compared that reality to some unstated ideal on the other side, something that is not left. She's already said she doesn't identify as a conservative. It's not clear if she identifies as a liberal or a centrist. She hasn't made up her mind yet, but she's going to she's gonna compare the left to something that's not on the left. And she lists off in this video what she considers the sins and evils of the left without ever stopping to think of to what extent or in what ways are these things uniquely leftist or even disproportionately or especially leftist. They, there's, so there's this victimhood mentality. They don't believe in personal responsibility. They are completely intolerant of diversity of thought. Intolerant. They are humorless people. Um, they want to make society boring. And they want to make it so that no one can do so much as make a joke. Um, if you are not on their side 100%, they will slander you mercilessly. And it'd be funny if it weren't such a dirty trick. So she claims people on the left are censorious, that they insist on censorship, on restriction of freedom of speech. Have you spent much time in a Southern Baptist church lately? Have you spent much time in any conservative Catholic setting? How about conservative Buddhism in Japan? Have you hung out with conservatives who identify as Zen Buddhist from Japan? How about conservative Islam? How about straight up conservative atheists? You really sincerely think you're making this contrast between the, the levels of censorship and the type of censorship you experience with, you know, left wingers on Twitter. I think that's basically what we're talking about here. In contrast to what? In contrast to what unstated ideal are you complaining about something that's that's real? Now look, I want to catch you guys up with, with who I am. Many of you people watching this video, it's the first time you've ever seen my face or, or heard my name. On the other hand, regular viewers of my channel, it's probably your first time ever hearing the, the name Lindsay Shepard or, or seeing her face. Uh, so really briefly about who she is and who I am. Lindsay Shepard is the latest personality to emerge to internet stardom out of a fleeting controversy on a university campus in Canada. Who did that before? Notably, Jordan Peterson. There was, a, there was a really meaningless controversy on a university campus in Canada with Jordan Peterson. He started appearing in television interviews and newspaper headlines, and uh, old media led the way, new media followed behind, and he became a, an internet superstar of, of tremendous scale and scope and influence. Lindsay Shepard seems to be on that same path. There was a completely meaningless controversy at her campus, not even worth describing. That controversy led to TV interviews, TV coverage, newspaper headlines, and now I notice in three days, 
um, 170,000 views on the first video ever posted to her channel. She's got a real platform now to, to, to state her views on the internet, okay? The main thing I'm known for politically here on the internet is talking about vegan politics. What's going on within veganism? I'm interested in veganism, ecology, wildlife management. I actually have a bunch of other interests. My university degree is in political science. I'm also interested in First Nations and indigenous people and a bunch of other... But this, this is the main thing I'm known for. In the same way that Lindsay Shepard uncritically and unthinkingly singles out examples of people on the internet defaming her from the left, and unthinkingly just attributes this to the left as if it's a problem on the left and is not a problem with conservatives or is not a problem with, with mainstream liberals, as if it's only a problem that leftists say that she is right-wing when, when she's not, and I've, it would just be impossible through Google to find examples of conservatives claiming that Obama is a socialist. Hint, Obama is not a socialist. It would be impossible for me to find examples of conservatives claiming that Obama is a communist. That kind of, you know, hyperbolic misrepresentation. You think that's hard to find? You think what you're talking about here, what you're complaining about here, is a unique problem with the left, or is especially a problem with the left, is in any way more a problem with the left on Twitter or the left wing on YouTube than it is with the center or the conservatives. I've got to tell you, I mean, somebody like Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore is very successful here on YouTube, a lot of the time what he's complaining about is slander and defamation from the center, from mainstream representatives of the Democrat Party, mainstream conservatives, people who are not left wing or right wing, but still engage in these types of these types of tactics. So trying to make it not okay to talk about issues like being white. Okay? I want to talk about those ideas neutrally. I don't have an agenda to push when it comes to that. But I they're trying to make it so that you can't be neutral about it. It's either uh, absorb the the whole discourse about white privilege and and uh, you have to have white guilt. Otherwise, you're standing beside some white nationalists. Okay, you must be a white nationalist as well. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it, and they're trying to circulate this image of me. They're, they're posting it all over social media just in response to various things, like just to, just to spread the image for the sake of spreading the lie. You know, long story short, if within this social context, I think you've got to say, look, isn't this just a feature of politics? and specifically of politics in this new era, where to some extent everyone has a voice, not just NBC, CBS, CBC, not just a small number of broadcasters, but to some extent from the grassroots up, people can make their own propaganda. And that's what some people have done to criticize you, Lindsay. I understand that. Some people have photographed you, uh, or they've taken a photograph of you standing next to right-wing extremists, neo-Nazis, and they've said, hey, look, this is the reality of who Lindsay Shepard is. She literally stands with these right-wing people. You, you think that that's never happened. It's never happened that the mayor of Toronto was photographed shaking hands with the leader of the Hells Angels biker gang. He didn't have to account for why he was just standing and talking to these people. Now, of course, the mayor of Toronto didn't support this biker gang, but he met with and talked to these people. Any time someone talks to their opponents in politics, left or right, you think there isn't a problem of stating and restating your position and why you talk to these people, in what sense you oppose them, what the nature of the opposition or debate was, etc. You, you think this is a problem. You, you have, uniquely or especially, or that this only comes from the left and not the right. This is profoundly morally incoherent. It's profoundly politically wrong in the same way that it's wrong when communists complain to me that inequality between the factory owners and the factory workers is only or especially a problem within capitalism. Take a good look, even right now in 2018, the reality of factory workers in North Korea, even farm workers in North Korea, even uh, uh, forestry workers, guys cutting down trees in North Korea. Look at the kind of social inequality that flourishes under, under communist regimes, and now we can start talking. Now we can talk in a nuanced way, in a comparative way. We can also compare Denmark to England. We can compare Italy to Florida. I don't mind. It's not as if this is the only comparison we can make. There are a lot of nuanced and worthwhile comparisons we can make globally. And I do think that people like Lindsay Shepard suffer from, frankly, what I would call bumpkinism. 
I think this is someone who's never uh, cast the net of her reading wide enough to think about even just some of the examples I mentioned, what it's like in terms of the contrast between conservative and liberal within Japan. What it's like, what's the contrast between conservative and liberal within a country like Taiwan, where the parties are not even left versus right. They're actually independent, pro-independence versus pro-unification. And then the, the, the familiar traits of left and right are actually quite hard to pin down within their political party system. What, how does this work in Greece, in Italy, or even within communist China? It's baffling, but people often refer to right-wing members of the communist party in China. These are the kinds of debates we get into. If you had some appreciation for this, I think you wouldn't respond to this challenge in your life, Lindsay, uh, by blaming the left and trying to, you know, separate yourself from this left from the left in this way. When, as you admit yourself, there are fundamental questions of value and priority that tie you to the left, and where the right, the conservatives, will not will not make any place for you. You open by talking about how much ecology meant to you, or how much it still means to you. Do you really think that your priorities, your interest in ecology, do you really think you can plug that in in the Conservative Party of Canada? Do you think you can plug that in with the alt-right, you know, the ecologists of the alt-right? I don't like the fact that in Canada, uh, so many people regard ecology as the domain of the left. I really don't. I'm not comfortable with it. I do not like the extent to which people presume the left wing has a monopoly on ecology and um, environmental activism. It's deeply disturbing to me. I'm a vegan and I'm not left-wing. It's a big problem in my life. But still, brass tacks, baby, this is the reality, okay? You've said these were your reasons in the past for identifying as left, and you don't have something better to replace it with. So if you wanna, if you wanna make progress, work, find colleagues you can work with in the Canadian system, you gotta take a long, hard look. Who can I work with in the Liberal Party? Who can I work with in the Democrat Party? Who can I work with in the Green Party? The answer may be nobody. That's how I feel a lot of the time. But you're gonna, if 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 you care about ecology, those are the compromises you're gonna have to look to make. Let's talk about First Nations. You talk a lot about white guilt in a really kind of vague and troubling way, Lindsay. I. Uh, they're trying to make it so that you can't be neutral about it. It's either um, absorb the the whole discourse about white privilege and and uh, you have to have white guilt. Otherwise, you're standing beside some white nationalists. Okay, you must be a white nationalist as well. What, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't subscribe to the the white guilt narrative? We got a crisis going on right now. The Cree language is going to go extinct. The Mohawk language is going to go extinct. Ottawa. Ottawa is the name of the capital city of Canada. Guess what? It's also the name of a language that's going extinct. Walk up to a bank machine, put in your card. Which language do you want to do business in? They're going to have Chinese, English, French, maybe Portuguese, Spanish, Korean. They got all kinds of languages. None of them are Canadian. When was the last time you went up to a bank machine? What are we going to do about language extinction? What are we going to do about the unbelievably awful legacy of terrible crypto genocidal policies of the Canadian government of First Nations? I also don't think white guilt is a great framework to address those issues in. But if you care, if you want to make a positive difference, you tell me how you could possibly make that positive difference by buddying up with the alt-right or even the conservative party. And again, I wish the left didn't have a monopoly on these values. I wish I could tell you I had competing offers from the whole political spectrum, that there were really great solutions being proposed by the conservative party for how to handle these issues, what to do on language policy, First Nations, the future of indigenous peoples, etc. I wish I could tell you that. It's not true. It, the same brutal reality we have to face up to with ecology, we have to face up to on these, frankly, race issues. And in Canada, those are the pressing race issues of our time, the legacy of our colonialist genocidal past, and just straight up failed education policies for First Nations and, and, and where we go from here with our indigenous people and a society that is built on a parliamentary system that actively excludes them, where they do not have democratic representation. Whether or not anyone has democratic representation in Canada's parliamentary system is a question for another video. But all I know is I am, I do not want to have any part in this disgusting leftist culture. So Lindsay, I want to say I do sympathize with the situation you're in based on my own experience with vegan activism. I said earlier, people who have never seen this before, you don't know, this is my experience being a voice in the vegan movement. I have been slandered and defamed to an unbelievable extent by my fellow vegans, sometimes in ways that are minor and subtle, 
some of just whole stories made up about my private sex life. I have recently. I've had people call me a communist when I'm not even left wing. Uh, there are people who call me right wing. There are people who lie about my my specific views on stuff like the the status of the mentally disabled. People make up specific lies and slander about specific political views. People make up very vague and general lies about my moral character, about my sex life. It's mind-blowing. It's unbelievable. And this happens within veganism. You know, a supposedly non-violent, ecologically plugged-in, enlightened form of activism, right? But what if I responded to that experience the same way you did and just said, well, I'm going to cut myself off from veganism then. I'm going to just assume, I'm going to compare something real to something ideal. I'm going to assume that veganism is really bad and messed up this way and there's some other movement, there's some other form of activism out there that's way better, whether that's the conservative party or the liberal party or the alt-right or the green person. I don't do that, okay? I stand my ground. I delineate very clearly where I stand, where you know my true position is, where reality stops and where the defamation starts. Above all else, when you see yourself as a person who cares about politics, whether you think of yourself as an activist or a politician or a lobbyist or an intellectual, a public intellectual, however you think of yourself, when you think of yourself as a person who cares about politics and you look back at the history of others who suffered and striven for political change, whether you look at Martin Luther King Jr. or leader of the Communist Party of Laos, living in a cave while the U.S. dropped bombs in the mountains, whether you look at the struggle to abolish slavery, struggle for civil rights, struggle for gay rights, when you look at that track record and then you look in the mirror at these bullshit complaints you're making about people saying nasty things about you on Twitter, ask yourself this question, who has suffered less? You and I both, Lindsay, have suffered. We've suffered from people saying mean things about us on the internet, defamation, slander. We've both suffered. Keep it in perspective. Look at how Martin Luther King Jr. lived and look at how he died. Look at how Mahatma Gandhi lived and how Mahatma Gandhi died. Ho Chi Minh, you take your pick, okay? The road to making a positive difference through political change, whether you take examples from the left, right, center, gay rights, you name it, it involves a whole lot of suffering. And when you see yourself in that historical context, honey, you got to really think. Compared to them, looking at yourself in that context, who has suffered less? Da -da 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 -da.